this morning, if the Lord will help us, you know, I've thought about a lot of things, and uh, somebody told me a long time ago that the older you get, the faster time goes, and I thought it was a joke. Turns out they were a lot smarter than me because they're right, okay? And the older you get, the faster time goes. Here we are, I looked up, and we're, in the, we're towards the end of July already this year. You know, somewhere along the age 40, 45, things really started speeding up. And I don't know, well, I do know, I am out of shape, and I can't do as many things as I did when I was younger. But the fact of the matter is, you run around like a chicken with your head cut off sometimes, trying to get everything done, because the time just seems to get shorter and shorter, and time just keeps flying and flying. So it's no wonder that we don't seem to have enough time to do the things we would like to do and get to church and do everything else and something falls by the wayside. Why does that happen? So if the Lord will help us today, we're going to talk about understanding present time. So in Romans, the 13th chapter, the 11th verse, it said in that, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now it is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and to make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Let's try to understand the present time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you once again for the privilege of being in the house of God. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you've given us to stand up here to read your holy anointed word. And we ask, Lord, that you anoint us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet so that we can bring forth the word as you would have us to speak it, Lord. Anoint the ears of the people to hear this word, Lord, so this word can lead us, so it can guide us, so it can teach us the things that we need to know to be overcoming Christians in these last days. And Lord, we pray for the people out there on Facebook and the people out there in Radio Land, the people here at the church, Lord, that we could become an overcoming Christian, that we could become the light to this lost and dying world, and we'll not fail to give you the praise and the glory for all you do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I know many of you are familiar with Big Ben, and I'm not talking about the quarterback that wears number seven and wears that black and gold whose team will not be named today, but... <laughs> I'm talking about Big Ben the clock uh, in London. Big Ben is a big old clock in London. It sits in the Tower of Parliament there in London. And one of the great things about it is it's so precise. It has got a 13 and a half ton pendulum attached to a five ton clock. What's that mean? That's 27,000 pounds. You've all seen those grandfather clocks with that pendulum swinging. Now imagine one that weighs 27,000 pounds swinging. And the scientists have determined that that's one of the most accurate clocks in the world. It's not digital like the ones now that are very accurate, but this thing picked up one second in 20 years according to God's celestial time. And I didn't call it God's celestial time. The scientists call it God's celestial time because God put the planets into motion, the moons into motion, all the other things into motion so, so precisely that the scientists can tell time by that. And they know that it is so precise that Big Ben picked up one second in 20 years. So he said, how do we fix that? So they had to think about it. and They had to go about things. And they took a coin about the size of a penny and taped it to the top of that pendulum a 27,000 pound pendulum and something the size of a penny made it precisely right it stopped picking up that second every 20 years so it just needed a little adjustment see and that was according to God's celestial time so they fixed that but God's greatest measuring piece is not his celestial clock of the planets. His greatest measuring piece is the word of God. And so if we look at the word of God and we try to measure ourselves up according to the word of God, we're going to find out that maybe we need a little adjustment too. Maybe we need to be tweaked a little bit too. Maybe we need to have a little something to make sure that we're in step with the word of God. So today we're going to look at some passages of scripture and we'll consider a few things as we get to. But this 13th chapter, you know, Paul said, and I'm going to read this from an, another translation. It says, 
and to and do this understanding the present time the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because your salvation is nearer now than when we first believe see our salvation is closer now than we first believed we need to understand what's going on out there we need to understand what the present time is all about as we look around as we've studied our word as we've applied the word to our life we start looking around we see that everything is coming to pass all the prophecies are coming to pass all the signs all the wonders when the disciples asked Jesus what signs we need to be looking for when they read in Revelation what signs we need to be looking for as we start looking we see that all these signs are pointing to Jesus coming any day Amen. so wake up from your slumber our salvation is nearer than we first believed so we need to understand what our present time is all about but too many times we go along and we think oh you know I've got plenty of time I'm young I'm 58 years old there's times I feel young Keith there's times I feel old. There's times I get up in the morning and I, I sit up in bed and I can't hardly stand up. Knees don't work, back hurts. I'm like, why am I doing this again for the umpteenth time over 30 some years? But there's times when you feel young. That's what Satan does. See, the big lie that he's told people, he's tried to tell people, he tried to tell people, oh, Jesus isn't real, but that didn't work. He tried to tell people that church isn't real, but that didn't work. So what did he, what did he tell them? What lie did he tell them? Oh, you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time. Have your fun when you're young. You get saved and serve God when you're older. Guess what? Older doesn't always come. Guess what? That opportunity doesn't always come. See, we need to understand what time it is today. So as we look at it, we need to look at a few things. First, what time is it in my life? What time is it in the church life? And what time is it in the world's life? See, as we go through this 13th chapter, it says, And knowing that the time is now, it is high time to wake out of sleep. See, the night is far spent. It's almost gone. You know, And things that they did in the dark are eventually going to come to life. Things that people think they've hidden from the pastor, it's eventually going to come to the light. Things that people did in their, in their closet, are eventually, things were done in the dark, is going to pass away. And things you're going to find out about that. See, number one thing is, what time is it in my life? Is it the beginning? Is it the middle? Is it the end? The truth is, we don't know. The truth is, I can walk out of those porch and this be my last day here on earth. It doesn't matter if I'm 20, if I'm 120. It doesn't matter. We don't really know what it is. We kind of measure it by years, measure it by months, measure it by whatever. But we don't know what time it is in our life. But... But he said there, Paul said in Romans, it's high time. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. We need to be getting about the Father's business. You know, I said something a few weeks ago about Bill Cosby, and everybody looked at me funny. But listen, he was a funny guy back when I was younger. I read a lot of things. I watched a lot of things. Yeah, I didn't know what he was doing behind closed doors. See, eventually things are done in the dark, eventually come to light. But he wrote a book that said, how time flies. He was talking about turning 50 years old. And he was talking about remembering his dad when his dad turned 50 and his dad had love handles. He goes, oh, I'll never have love handles. Guess what? He ended up with love handles. His dad used to make noises when he got up off the couch. Anybody else do that? Yeah. Mm. Oh. I used to laugh when my dad was like, why do you make those noises? He goes, one of these days... And he was right. One of these days, I make the same sound. You ask my wife. I'm like, oh, Lord. Mm. I used to think I'd never make that kind of sound unless I was lifting weights again. But guess what? I make it at least once a day, sometimes two or three times a day. I'm like, oh, Lord. And glasses. I mean, I don't need glasses to read. I mean, you guys see that. But I used to use glasses for distance vision. But my distance vision is getting better. But I still remember the one time I had to wear them to drive to see distance because it knocked out the glare and everything else. So I'd driven home and, you know, did some things around the house and washed my face and we ate supper. And we were getting ready to go out and I started looking all over the place. 
And I, I looked on the end table, looked in the dining room, I looked in the bathroom, I tore the house apart, I looked on the table beside the front door, I even went out to my truck, opened the console, I had my glass case, it was in there empty, so I walked back in the house and I went to holler at Christina and I'm standing there in front of that table in the entryway and there's a mirror and I'm looking and they're sitting on top of my head. <laughs> See, that's the way it is. We, we, Time changes. Our bodies change. All those things happen as it goes on. I can't tell you how many times I jammed my fingers wearing those glasses because I couldn't see, right? That's the reason I stopped wearing them when I played the piano because I could see half my hands. And I'd be up here and people must have thought I had, you know, some kind of condition because I was trying to find my fingers with my glasses. But our bodies change as we get older. We get a little bit wider. Our eyes get a little bit weaker. Our hearing changes a little bit. You know, we do all that stuff, you know, and it happens time and time again. So according to God's clock, how are things going in your life? According to God's clock, you know, whether you're young or old, it doesn't matter. Paul writes, the hour has come. It's present time to wake up from your slumber. He said, wake up. Paul told us, wake up. See, if we're just going through the motions, if we're just walking around like a zombie, we're going to church because that's what we're expected to do on Sunday. But we don't come in here with joy in our heart. We don't come in here with the purpose of worshiping the Lord. We don't come in here with the purpose of lifting one another up. Then why are we doing it? He says it's high time to wake up from your slumber and realize that your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. We need to come in here and be excited about coming into the house of the Lord. See, too many people think, oh, well, nobody knows this. I'm just going to go through the motions. You can't go through the motions. You've got to be sold out. You've got to be surrendered. You can't be sitting on the fence post. You can't just be standing on the vice. You've got to be in it. You've got to wait out in there. Wait out in there and take a chance on the Lord, and I guarantee you he'll meet you there. I guarantee you everything's going to work out the way he said it's going to work, work out. See, we can cover up a lot of things. But we can't cover up what Jesus sees. We can't hide what Jesus sees. So what time is it in your life today? It's time to wake up. Second thing, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. What time is it in the church? 1 Timothy, fourth chapter. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. See, he said, the Spirit clearly states in the latter time, hey, watch out. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. We need to know what the Word of God says. We need to take the Word of God and apply it to our life so that we can't be led away by false spirits. We can't be led away by false teaching. We can't be enticed with all this. He said in the latter times, as we start looking at this, see, I'm convinced that it's happened time and time again. And he even calls them, you know, speaking lies and hypocrisy. They're hypocritical liars. That's what he says. They're hypocritical liars. And I believe that's happened time and time again in my lifetime as we look back and we see all that stuff. The church is paying the price for deceitful leaders. The church is paying the price for preachers that will stand in the pulpit and worry about lying in their pockets, worrying about tickling the ears of the people. Because what's happened? We've got an entire generation of weak, mealy-mouthed Christians that don't know what the truth is because they've been following a lie. And what's that cost us? That's cost us strong, faith-believing, Bible-believing, spirit-filled believers. But it's also cost us a credibility problem in the world. Because the world is looking at us as weak and mealy-mouthed and not standing up for what we believe in. See, the world knows what a Christian looks like better than we do in the church sometimes. See, the, the world knows what a Christian should look like. And like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, we've got to be careful. We've got, to, we've got to rebuild our credibility with the world. We've got to rebuild our integrity with the world. We don't have to run the bars with them. We don't have to look like them. We don't have to act like them. We've got to act like the children of God that the Word has told us to be. 
We've got to walk the way the Word of God has told us to walk. We've got to talk the way the Word of God told us to talk. And if we start speaking the kingdom of God, preaching the kingdom of God, telling them about the kingdom of God and living it and putting God first, everything else will take care of itself. But we've got to rebuild that credibility. And look at that. He also thinks that last part of that first verse says, and doctrines of devils. People are listening to teachings of devils. See, it wasn't that long ago that when I was growing up, we heard a little bit about devil worship when I was a little kid. But the church really wasn't concerned about it. People really didn't believe it. But over the years, we start seeing it more and more. They, they're coming out of their closets. They're going out and doing you know, this, that, and the other. And I still remember in the late 90s, there was, a, there was a news story about uh, four boys that were involved in Satanism. And three of them beat one of them to death. And the boys, when they were interviewed and when they were you know, testifying, they laughed about it. They said, well, what did he say? Well, he was crying and asking why we were doing this to him. And I told him because it was fun. See, Satan is real. We've got to be ready. We can't listen to the teachings of devils. We can't listen to the doctrines of devils. We've got to know what the Word of God says. Because if we don't know what the Word of God says, Satan can come. You know, he can come like a roaring lion, but he can also come like an angel of light. He can come and he, look, he can look pretty. He can sound pretty. He can tell you the you know, things that will tickle your ears. He'll tell you all the things that you want to hear. And you want to believe him because it sounds good. But if it's not according to the Word of God, honey, it's a lie. See, we get too excited about all the other things. Remember, Paul said, wake up. Wake up. Don't listen to those seducing spirits. Don't listen to the doctrines of devil. Don't listen to the liars that are speaking hypocrisy. Make sure that you're standing up on the word of God. Make sure that you know what the word of God says. See, too many people have abandoned their faith because they followed a false false leader. Too many people are sitting at home today like this because somebody heard them in church. They're sitting at home mad like I'll show them. Guess what? You'll show them all the way in the pits of hell if you don't get back to an altar of prayer. Okay. Well, Brother Houston, you don't know what they did to me. No. But you got to remember, that was a person that did that to you. That was not God that did that to you. See, God never did anything but send His only begotten Son to die for our sins so that we could receive salvation. That's what God did for us. So if you followed after a false teacher or you followed after a, deceit, a deceived preacher, then, you know, it happens. Get back to an altar of prayer. What time is it? What time is it? It's time to wake up. The third thing. What time is it in the world? 2 Timothy, the third chapter. This past year, I have read this scripture. I've seen it posted on Facebook. I've seen it on the internet. I've seen it everywhere else. And everybody wants to post it, but nobody seems to want to do anything about it. It says, this know also. He goes, you, I want you to know this too. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lover of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. He said, hey, in the last time there's some terrible times coming. In the last days, there's some terrible times coming. I want you to know that. That's what he said. Yeah. Know this also. I want you to be aware. Why? Because just like we talked about in Sunday school, Jesus told them for three and a half years, hey, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be beaten. But on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And they didn't believe it. So he, Paul's telling us, hey, guess what? In the last days, there's going to be some bad times. There's going to be some terrible times. People are going to be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They're going to be lovers of flesh. They're going to be selfish. They're going to be looking after all kinds of things to fulfill these eyes, to fulfill these ears. They're going to be chasing after every pleasure that they can find. So where are we at today? Does that sound familiar? Are we, you know, are we lovers of money? There we go. I finally got an amen. Okay. 
People today, they're lovers of money. They're lovers of ourself. I tell people all the time, the opposite of love is not hate. Everybody likes to say that, but it's not. The opposite of love is selfishness. See, Jesus gave of himself because he loved us. But when you're selfish, you want stuff for you more than you love that other person. You want it to yourself. See, we become self-centered. We become selfish. It's what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me? And we've been conditioned to believe that. And I've said it time and time again. It's been insidious. From the time my generation started growing up and we were hearing the Burger King commercials and the McDonald's commercial, you deserve a break today. Burger King, have it your way. We get to do these things and that things and we've been conditioned time and time again. It's you. It's about you. It's about you. Oh, I must be very important. And then along came participation trophies. Everybody wins. So what happens? We think it's about us. We start loving ourselves. We start thinking that we've arrived. We start thinking there's something that we're special because of who we are. We're special because of who he is. We're special because he created us in his likeness. We're special because he sent his son to die as a ransom for my sins. We're special for that reason. We're special because of him, not of anything that we've ever done. Not of any talent, not of any ability, not of any bank account. We are special because we have been bought with a price. But too many times we forget that thing. Too many times we think, oh, well, it's the last days. But we don't see any respect for authority anymore. We don't see respect for teachers anymore. We don't re- see respect for law enforcement. We don't see respect for military. It's all about me, 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 me. Oh, if something doesn't go the way I like it, I'm going to cry. I'm going to riot. I'm going to do something else. We have become, we're right here in these last days. Does it sound familiar? Wake up! It's time to wake from your slumber. It's high time. It's high time to wake from that. See, we hear horrible stories about families beating families, killing family members, wiping out entire family. It wasn't that long ago, right over here in Hamilton Mason Road. A young man got up first thing in the morning, 15 years old, killed his mom and dad because they took away his Xbox. Why? Because he wanted that electronics more than he loved his parents. See, it's high time that we wake up. So what time is it? You know, we, get, we come together in the house of God, but for what purpose? We come together in the house of God, but to what end? Do we want to know the Lord? Do we want to increase our relationship with Him? Do we want to worship God? Do we want to uplift our brothers and sisters and encourage them? Or are we just doing it because, well, my singer is singing today. Or my preacher is preaching today. If I miss, the pastor is going to call me and ask me where I was, and I don't have a good answer. That's why it's always important to tell your pastor you're not going to be here, or I will call you. (laughs) And those of you that call me and let me know, I appreciate it, by the way. Because I'm not up here here counting my sheep and trying to preach at the same time. It it, It makes it a lot easier. But, you know, there's not much time left. As my wife comes to the piano, there's not that much time left. You know, as we look at this thing, you know, we've got to step out into darkness, put on that armor of light, Paul said in Romans. You know, maybe like Big Ben, maybe we just need a little tweak. Maybe we just need a little coin taped to that pendulum to get us exactly where we need to be. See, what we need to realize that God has called us all into that marvelous light. He sent his son to die for you, to die for me. And I offer God's invitation today. If you've got to the point where it's high time and you're waking up from that slumber and you're realizing that our salvation is closer than when we first believed. See, our race is almost run. And it doesn't matter if you're 19, 20 years old, doesn't matter if you're 80 or 90 years old. We're one day closer to our salvation, to our going home, than we were yesterday. And it's high time. It's high time that we wake up from that. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, 
If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, it's high time. We need to understand the present time. Time's wrapping up. Time's winding up. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know about tomorrow. What time is it in your life? Let's all stand. And as my wife sings, this altar's open. And if you don't know where you're at, if you don't know where you're at in your walk with Christ, if there's any doubt, if there's any, I, I, Brother Houston, I'm not sure. This altar is a great place to secure your salvation. Let's all come around the altar and have a good season of prayer. Sure by now that you would have reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved the day. Wait. 